Welcome back to the Adventures of the Monad, which will look at life, the universe, and everything. My name is Kazim Kamal Ur Rahim. In this series, I ask the question where do we come from? Who are we? And where are we going? I post one presentation a week. Please subscribe to my website and hit the bell icon for notifications of future videos. You can also leave comments and join in forum discussions on my website. In presentation 14, I began to look at what exactly constitutes consciousness and where it resides. I started by looking at brain consciousness, body consciousness, which includes etheric consciousness, and finally emotional consciousness. I wish now to go on with a discussion of consciousness in our subtle bodies by looking at mental consciousness. Mental consciousness can be defined as the self's ability to perceive vibrations in mental matter and convert this into consciousness. We have previously talked about thought itself being constructed of matter. This is why it is called a thought form. So where are these thoughts occurring? They are occurring in the lower mental body. This body forms part of the three envelopes of incarnation. The mental body is one of the two bodies, along with the physical body, that is divided into two separate but linked envelopes. The lower mental body has four different degrees of consciousness. These correspond to four grades of mental molecules that inhabit the mental envelope. The grades starting from the densest are 47.7, 47.6, 47.5 and 47.4. The last molecular level is important because it houses the permanent mental molecule that is a structure that survives the physical death of a person and stores the mental memories of that particular incarnation. As a monad evolves through the various planes of matter, when its focus reaches the mental plane, it begins to activate the mental molecules in this envelope sequentially. This allows the persona to process thought in different ways. Starting with the densest mental matter, 477, activation of these molecules allows the monad to engage in deductive thinking. This means the person can slowly and methodically deduce and infer information that is gleaned from its environment. These thoughts are described as being concrete in nature. The monad apprehends what it sees and is able to describe it. This level of thought is active in all humans. In fact, the monad starts to develop this level of consciousness while it is still in the animal kingdom. It does this when it individualizes. More on this later. The monad gradually shifts its focus of thought into more subtle molecules and begins to develop the capacity to engage in associated thinking, 47.6. This now allows it to discern common patterns in its environment and associate them with one another. A monad at this level sees things in black and white. It also tends to make generalizations about the world of affairs it finds itself in. Such personalities tend to jump to conclusions and have very fixed beliefs. These thought patterns are very active in intelligent people such as scientists and theologians. They seem unable to see the other person's perspective. I can think of a well-known Oxford biologist who staunchly defends the theories of Darwin as though they are the gospel truth. He would be appalled that I equated his thoughts to those of the gospel. As you can imagine, he's also a born-again atheist. But there is hope. 
The monad eventually progresses its mental abilities until it can understand concepts from a different perspective. It has developed conceptual thinking 47.5. The monad now begins to see the bigger picture. Such personalities avoid drawing rigid conclusions. The sad truth is that very few people have reached this level of consciousness today. The final level of thought that exists in the lower mental body is found on the 47-4 plane, the highest in the mental body. The thinking generated here is called universal thinking. When a monad reaches this level of thinking, it is able to comprehend entire systems of thought from a single abstract concept. Ever wondered how a genius thinks? Well, this is it. This type of thinking is a lower level of intuition that I will discuss shortly. What is happening here is that abstract causal concepts are being converted into concrete mental descriptions. When a monad reaches this level of thought, it is on the verge of enlightenment. Belief systems are capable of altering our perceived reality in the same way that our emotions can do. They do this by colouring and distorting perception. It goes without saying that all belief systems constructed without a full grasp of all the pertinent facts is bound to be flawed. The thinker should be prepared to add new facts into the mix. Mental consciousness combines inputs from our sensory mechanisms with emotions and thought forms and comes up with a unified perception of the environment. As mental consciousness develops, it begins to disentangle emotions and desires from the thinking process. In doing this, it begins to draw the upper reaches of the mental body into closer association with the causal body. For most of us, we tend to think we are conscious in our mental bodies. In reality, for the vast majority of humanity, we are actually focused in our emotional bodies and function through the permanent emotional atom 48-1. Even if we are focused in our emotional body, we can still, however, think. I have already mentioned this thinking started before we even entered the fourth, the human kingdom. So what is happening? Well, the best way to describe humanity when it comes to our subtle bodies is as a complex of emotional and mental consciousness. The Sanskrit word for this is karma manas meaning desire mind. In an ideal world, our thoughts should control our emotions. In reality, our emotions control our thoughts. We think with our emotions and desires. There is a path of development through the concrete lower mental body that does eventually lead to enlightenment. We have to work our way up the four levels of mental thought, leading from deductive thinking through associated thinking, to conceptual thinking, and eventually to universal thinking. We are then able to take the next step in our mental evolution. So now let's go on and look at causal consciousness. When you examine the triadic structure of permanent atoms and molecules, it becomes apparent that the mental body is split between the first and second triads. This poses a problem. What constitutes a human being is the possession of consciousness on the three lower planes of matter. These are 47, the mental plane, 48, the emotional plane, and 49, the physical etheric plane. Interestingly enough, animals have exactly the same bodies as well, with minor clarifications that have been discussed in past presentations. What truly differentiates humans from animals is the splitting off of the mental body into a lower concrete part and a higher abstract part. The latter is referred to as the causal body, and this is located on the second triad. Causal consciousness 
comes in two flavors. The first is objective causal consciousness. This is the ability to see the cause of an effect in the physical, emotional and mental worlds. Why is this such a big deal? When you witness an event, you firstly apprehend it with your lowest mental molecules and make deductions. You then make inferences about what has happened by comparing it to other experiences you have had. You can then place the events you are witnessing in a bigger picture by conceptualizing the event from different viewpoints. Finally, you can place the event in a general scheme of things. You are now thinking universally. What you have not been able to do is to deduce the real cause behind the event. Why is this? Because the trigger for the event may not even lie in the current series of events that you see before you. This is because you do not know the destiny and karma that leads to this event occurring. This is the insight that objective causal consciousness affords you. The second level of causal consciousness is subjective. This affords the recipient of this signal input to receive information from the causal plane and interpret it via intuition. Think of this as an inner knowing. The differentiation of objective from subjective is worth emphasizing. When you objectively know something, you quite literally see it. Subjective knowledge is intuited in the brain. Subjective causal consciousness is gained prior to enlightenment. The monad now has access to the causal body and is able to activate the 47.3 and 47.2 molecules within it. Once objective causal consciousness is reached, the monad has managed to center itself in the 47.1 mental atom, which resides in the second triad. This is a huge achievement and marks the culmination of the passage of the monad through the fourth, the human kingdom. What makes causal matter special? It is not affected by our regular thoughts and emotions. The net result is that causal thoughts are not illusory or fictional. Illusions are experienced in the emotional body. This is because this body feeds back to us what we wish to see. The lower mental body is a fictional environment because we are free to think what we will. Where is the truth in that? On the causal plane, thoughts are quite literally the truth. We talk a lot about truth in our daily lives. We cannot know the real truth until we understand the causes behind anything we may be considering in the world of affairs. It is not difficult to comprehend that causal understanding is a great source of knowledge. Causal consciousness has the capacity to see the big picture as well as focus on minute details. It does this at the same time merging with the object rather than just observing it. An enlightened person can know the contents of a book without even opening it. They do not need to form judgments on the contents of the book as they know what is correct and what is not. It is even possible to know what was in the mind of the author as they wrote the book. This knowing can be expanded further to include the thoughts of the authors that form the references within the book. Clearly. When you are functioning within the causal world, you are truly firing on all cylinders. This is only in relation to the issues that are linked to the three lowest planes of matter. As mentioned earlier, there are three levels of causal consciousness. These, as you would expect, are all linked to matter that is developed sequentially after enlightenment. The levels of matter are on the 47.3, 47.2 and 47.1 planes. Activation of molecules on the 47.3 plane affords the monad 
an objective waking consciousness of the physical, emotional and mental planes. This state of consciousness is reached just before enlightenment and should not be regarded as clairvoyance. Clairvoyance affords the monad objective consciousness on the emotional plane and no further. Unfortunately, this plane is regarded as the realms of illusions. So the ability to glean any meaningful truth from access to or knowledge of this plane is very limited. It is from this plane the channelers draw their inspiration and which leads to tremendous flights of fancy that abound in print today. Now let's look at the levels of causal consciousness. Every subtle body has seven levels of matter within it. Six levels are made up from molecules and the highest level is atomic. As the mental body is divided between two triads, the causal part of the mental body has three levels of matter. These are objective levels of consciousness that they, and they can span between levels 47.3 to 47.1. Consciousness develops sequentially from the lower to the higher grades of matter. This occurs after enlightenment. As already mentioned, the lowest level of causal consciousness is on plane 47.3. The next level, 47.2, confers clear access to knowledge and ideas on the causal plane. While the level of consciousness below confers the ability to move freely in the lower bodies of incarnation, it is on level 47.2 that real causal understanding of events occurs. At the atomic level, 47.1, the monad has the ability to merge with external objects and come to know everything about that object. It is now that the monad comes to appreciate the unity of all life forms. This unity is the beginning and the end of duality. Causal consciousness is above and beyond normal consciousness, surpassing mental understanding as we know it. It is referred in the Gospels to the peace that surpasses understanding. Philippians chapter 4 verse 7. Once a monad has reached the level of objective causal consciousness, it no longer sleeps in the causal body between incarnations. It has continuity of consciousness between incarnations. The monad also is fully conscious of its series of past incarnations, as these can span well over 100,000 separate embodiments. That is a lot of information to remember. The advantage of such a large database of information is that the monad now has the wisdom gained from innumerable incarnations. This includes triumphs and disasters. They all contribute towards a thorough understanding of the development of consciousness through quaternary matter, from a rock all the way up to the fourth kingdom. Let's now look at the Akashic records. Causal consciousness is considered to be independent of time and space. This is not exactly true. What this consciousness confers is the ability to recall events from the past. Causal awareness is obviously also aware of current events. What it does not do is allow us to see into the future as these events have not occurred yet. An understanding of future events is possible when a monad is able to compute the most likely outcome from millions of variables. There are very advanced beings that can do this and they are known as the Lords of Karma. But that is another story. When an event is viewed from the past, it appears as if the event is happening in the present. Memories of these events are stored in a universal matrix known as the Akashic Records. These records exist on every plane of matter. It is only when causal consciousness is reached that there is clear and unequivocal understanding of an event. Clairvoyants, 
who consult this record on the emotional plane end up with a distorted picture. This understanding is like looking through a misty lens at an image that is reflected in a bowl of water, so the image is upside down. To top it off, the water is moving. It is not possible for the human kingdom to acquire consciousness higher than causal consciousness, as this is their highest body. It is, however, possible for a monad to be subjectively conscious half a plane above where it is objectively conscious. This will be discussed further in the next presentation when I look at the last two planes of matter in the solar system and the consciousness associated with them. If you wish to read a transcript of the presentation or leave a comment, links to my website are in the description box below. Thank you.